Well, I didn't quite trust the weather today, depending on whether or not it was going to be uh, sunny or raining. The weather said it was going to be raining, so again, that's what I based it on. I saw a lot of interesting stuff today in the form of videos, actually. And uh, for the drone, there's some uh, cool accessories, which kind of makes me wonder if you can actually use the drone this way or whether or not people would actually. The first wild video I saw, anyone else see this one of the, is it a tiger or a leopard? I think the, the police were trying to find it because it was running out in the loose. And it looked like they went onto the uh, roof. And holy cow, the thing just came out of nowhere afterwards. Man, it makes me wonder in those situations, would you rather fly something up there to uh, monitor it and to try to find it as opposed to bringing in an actual person up there? Although it makes me wonder how they would have caught the thing in general, like even if it knew where it was, because he didn't seem like he was equipped with anything, or maybe I'm wrong, but still, wow. The second one I saw was actually more thought-provoking, which is why it interested me. Uh, it had to do with someone trying to do like a land restoration, and from what I gather, they tried various things, like for example, I guess digging the ground and trying to create water for it, I guess to restore the land and it never worked. And after all that time and effort, apparently the whole solution, like what the guy said, was just to plant more grass. And I guess afterwards I basically got the water to stay in the ground and everything started to restore after like a couple of years and now you have like this marvelous land and all that. I think things like this is kind of cool because it makes it makes you wonder many times like whether or not you're overthinking or overdoing something with all the high-tech gizmos and all that that we have. Whereas like in this case, it's like just do what's natural that works if that makes sense. Kind of reminds me of that story. I don't know if you guys heard of that. The one about the, um, the soapbox factory one. Uh, it was something like you know, there's a factory that was putting uh, soapboxes through an assembly line. And one day they were so embarrassed because they delivered a box that was completely empty to their uh, customer or to the reseller or whatever. And so ever since then, the company pledged, okay, this will never happen again. So they implemented all these sophisticated x-rays and everything like that to monitor the boxes. You have all the staff looking at it every single day just to make sure there will never be an empty soapbox delivered again. <laughs> And then apparently there was some engineer one day, or not engineer, or something like a custodian or, you know, something like that. He just had the idea of, why don't I just put this big huge fan here, like this industrial fan, to blow out the boxes that are going by the assembly line. So if there ever is an empty box with no weight, it'll get blown off. <laughs> so you're like, well, why didn't we think of that? As, as opposed to spending all this high tech money and resources to solve a solution. And again, I like reading stuff like this or learning stuff like that because it helps to open up your mind to realize like, hey, like maybe you don't know every, everything there is to know and there's always uh, room for improvement. So stay open-minded. Looks like people are starting to ride the boats more often now. That'd be kind of an interesting contrast for an aerial video if I was able to take it. Actually, just taking uh, pictures and videos there reminds me of the main item that caught my attention today, which kind of made me think uh, about even like laws about putting your full name and address on the drones, at least uh, here in Canada. Uh, I believe this item here is from uh, Polar Pro. I actually bought my uh, filters from them. And this thing is called a katana. Because I've often said like there are actually people that use things like drones or like the Mavic Pro as like a steady cam. This is as opposed to buying like a huge camera with a traditional huge stabilizer. A lot of people actually just carry around the uh, Mavic Pro, for example. But it obviously it's a little bit weird to carry around just uh, on its own because I even heard people say when they try carrying it manually, the stabilizer doesn't work as intended because the way it was designed, how whatever you know that is, is meant for when it's on the air. So I guess with this accessory, you attach it and it kind of makes it like a traditional Steadicam rig. So that's kind of interesting. And it made me think, um, would people actually use this for their drones normally? Like just to film video as opposed to bringing like a DSLR for example? Would you actually use this kind of setup instead? Generally speaking, I know there's a lot of people like after those laws were announced, they're like, oh, that's it, I'm getting rid of my Mavic. Like it's useless now. But with this in mind, like would, you, would this actually be a, a good option as a camera replacement if that makes sense? Or would you say, nah, I bought the drone to fly or whatever, I'll never use it like in that kind of fashion. Now in general, I think most people agree putting your full contact information, your full address, everything outside of your drone is a little bit ridiculous. And so it made me think in this case, what if someone was literally, like again, just using this drone as a steady cam, like with an accessory out in the public. Would you say, for example, like, okay, well that's fine. You don't have to put your address and all that in there because, you know, you're using it just like a regular camera for the most part. 
But if you were like the police <laughs> and you asked person, is that a drone? Well, technically, yes. Oh, I want to see your full address and everything on there. Like, would that make sense actually? Like to do that? Or in this case, would you say, well, no, because I'm not flying it, then, you know, technically I, you shouldn't have to abide by those uh, rules because they're meant more for flying, if that makes sense. Because even from my uh, personal experience before, like back before the interim laws were uh, introduced, I was having like conversations with people saying how like, you know, the Mavic Pro according to Transport Canada is not a quote drone, it's a model aircraft, for example. But then people of authority, they're like, literally, they said, well, I don't care what you call it, I call it a drone, so that's it, so that's final. <laughs> but it makes me think again in many ways when it comes to drones, like for myself personally, with the way I use it, I treat it as a regular camera and I'm just waiting for the day people just kind of see it as an everyday item that people can use. I mean, I was even showing before, there's even like accessories coming out where that makes your cell phone fly so you can take air selfies. So in many ways, like I hope basically they'll introduce more appropriate or reasonable laws that people are just using it for videography and photography as opposed to treating it like some kind of military aircraft weapon and having all these like over the top rules. Is that actually too far-fetched to believe that in the near future everyone in some capacity is going to have some kind of camera that can fly in the air? It's going to be funny to look back because it just again reminds me of that snowboarder versus skier video. <laughs> Even I can't believe like, really? That's how people thought about it? Oh, the scenery made me want to edit some uh, footage. Oh, let's see what we can uh, pick up here. Actually, there's supposed to be a provincial election coming up here, if I'm not mistaken, but I'm guessing that's no use in terms of changing the laws because I know some people have said it's more about the federal election. Oh, I guess you got to vote still. All right, see you guys later.